Hey, how's it going? I just wanted to put out kind of a fun deck video for Halloween. And this was a card that I was pretty excited for when it first came out. I don't think it ended up being as good as I had hoped, but it is the Houndstone EX. It has a uh, revenge style attack that for a psychic double colorless does 160 plus 10 for each psychic Pokemon in your discard pile. And the, uh, the baby version has basically the same attack, but it's 80 plus. And even the uh, graveyard has uh, the same attack for one psychic, but it's 10 plus. It's a pretty cool card. Um, it's only psychic Pokemon, so it makes it a little bit harder to build the deck. But it does have a couple perfect cards to go with it right now. In the Dustnor that you can knock itself out. It gives up a prize, but you do 130 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, and it puts two or three more Psychic Pokemon in your discard pile. We also play the Gardevoir EX to accelerate energy that gives us Curlia for a draw engine. And then we have Clefki, probably the best starter in the game right now. It shuts off all basic Pokemon's abilities, both yours and your opponent's. But I wanted to play four of those, but I just couldn't find the space because I still wanted to play a couple rare candy to have the option to attack turn two or rare candy into a Dustnor. Um, I started off with a 3-3 Curlia line, but I just wanted a little more Pokemon and I was having a bit of trouble finding the Curlias, so I went up to a 4-4. And yeah, that's the deck. But before we get into the games, I just want to say shout out to uh, Matthew for the $5. That's pretty awesome. Thank you so much. And happy that you're getting into the game. The competitive side is pretty fun. And it should only get better because this format isn't the greatest that we've ever had, but it's still pretty fun. Yeah, so that's the list and let's get into the games. All right, so we're up against uh, Pidgey Control this game. At this point, I still thought it was gonna be Charizard, but it does end up being Pidgeot Control. And I thought about conceding right here, but I shouldn't have because Guardy decks usually have a pretty solid matchup into the Pidgey Control decks, especially this one. But I was just trying to like play some fun games with a fun deck, so wasn't really trying to play, you know, against a control deck. But I do think this person was probably just trying to learn the decks. I think they make a couple mistakes, like going out of their way for Genesect, I thought was a little bit random. I'm not 100% sure about that. I don't know what they would have gotten instead, but I don't know if Genesect was the right idea. So I drew into rare candy off this Iono. I was really hoping to hit a Ultra Ball or a Dusnor to be able to knock out both Pidgeys right here. That would be ideal, but I do not end up hitting that. Um, and I can just attack with the baby uh, Houndstone here because it is gonna knock out the Pidgey. It takes less energy and it'll also get through Mimikyu. I should also bench the Ralts, but I don't end up doing that. Cause I didn't want to put anything in play that could end up getting locked in the active spot. Cause I, this deck doesn't play like a ton of energy as you saw, I think it was like six or seven. And that's just kind of what I am debating here, what to do, but I, oh, I didn't even realize that. Wait, what? All right. I guess uh, I just ended up timing out there. I thought I passed. I had to run downstairs for something uh, to get delivery or something like that. And uh, I thought I passed the turn before I left, but apparently I just timed out my turn. It feels kind of rude, but I definitely didn't mean to do that. Um, Yeah, and that's when I got back. I was like, oh no, did I like waste two turns here or whatever? I thought like they took a turn and passed back and then I missed my other turn. But now that I'm watching it again, I wasn't really gone for too long. They do get into Luxray, which makes sense. That is a solid choice. Um, I'm not going to be able to like, I guess I could knock out the Duskull, like evolve it, knock it out, and then retreat the energy off of this Houndstone into the EX. But that's kind of a lot for me to get. Here I'm just debating whether to bench a Ralts or not, and I'm going to play the Iona. It sucks because they only have two cards, but... I got what I was looking for in the energy card to retreat out of the active. I'm not going to be knocking out the uh, Luxray, but a two shot is definitely good enough. And I'm going to be able to use Curly to draw next turn. So 
there's really nothing that this Luxray is threatening. It can take away my unfair stamp, which I don't really care about. Or I guess he's going to take away that in my uh, research. I busted out the old researches for this video that I remember I traded for these right when uh, research came out again. And I don't know, I'm not really a huge fan of them now that we have so many more options. I used to like the uh, full art cards a lot more than I do now. And I think I actually had to trade for these on uh, PDCGO. It's kind of funny, I end up drawing another research. But I'm hoping to get into a rare candy Dustnor here so that I can knock out the Mawile and the active, which would be pretty ideal. So I think I'm going to end up trading away the Psychic here. I could get rid of the Nest Ball, but I kind of wanted to hold on to that. I don't know. Could have gone either way. So here what I'm going to do is... um. Yeah, Ultra Ball, probably pull a yeah, another Dusknor or Duskull out of my deck. And I could have either done this, I could have stretchered for one back and used two of them to knock out the Mawile. But I'm gonna, I, since I have one in the deck, I'm just gonna knock it out with that and then stretcher for a um, Duskull and a Dusclops. And then hold on to both of them in my hand because I figure I don't want the cards to get eerie away and I know I don't know I don't know what they would expect me to be playing for like a stretcher count and how many items and stuff but there's definitely a chance that they would pal pad back the eerie and then use it again since they may or may not be newer to control I think when people are a little newer to control they're more likely to do that to just try to like spam stuff like eerie and misfortune sisters and stuff like that. Um, they do just grab a Mimikyu and retreat right away. They should have waited a little. <laughs> they play the Misfortune Sisters. That's funny. They actually hit like the, I think basically the three remaining items in my deck, which is kind of unfortunate. And they bring up the Guardi, but I can just retreat into, uh, back into the baby uh, Houndstone. But like I was saying, they should have just waited to retreat until after. I don't think it would have changed anything, but. Yeah, they don't really have much to play off of here. I don't really know what they could do to end up winning this game, except for maybe lock my Curlia in the active and hope that I don't have access to another Guard of War EX. I think is going to be probably the only play that they have to possibly win the game. But as you can see, I have it in my hand, so that is not going to work out. I could evolve it now, but I want to have the option to draw with my Curlia. And even if they lock it in the active for a turn or two, it's not really the end of the world. So the, the baby Houndstone's doing a lot of work. And I guess I accidentally made a deck that was pretty solid against control. So I think probably what they should have done at some point is they should have some kind of attacking option in the deck, whether it be like a Trap Ghost or a Blood Moon or Saluna. Yeah, and just knocking out my my attacker Iono and make me find something and then they could just penny loop and try and take all their prizes but this is like another example of a pretty solid advantage of the Dustnor decks against control decks like this they only get four off the Iono where they would normally always be getting six until the end of the game like this when they could uh start looping blood moon or whatever but i do think that's what they should go for here they do end up grabbing a counter catcher, which is just kind of uh, losing the game on the spot, basically. And I did draw my Mew EX, so either way I would have outs to draw a couple cards because they're going to tr knock out my Curlia. And forgetting about the double turbo, or I know double turbo was bugged at one point where it would make the attack still do full damage, so it's possible that they were still thinking that the uh, spread attack did 100 to the active, but you can just pop the uh, Dusclops and then knock it out with the baby uh, Houndstone. Don't know why I kept <laughs> having trouble remembering the name of the Pokemon all game and just like second guessing myself. But yeah, I don't know. Wish that deck was a little better, a little more viable. And I figured uh, Halloween was a perfect time to do a video on it. I might end up messing around with it a little more when it uh, 
When the baby one first came out, I was trying to make it work, but quickly found out that it wasn't that great, so I was excited for the EX to come out, and there's just so many other decks that essentially do the same thing, like take big one shots with a two price Pokemon like uh, Maridon, Raging Bolt, even Champau that would technically be a better deck, but I don't know, these uh, revenge style decks are always a lot of fun where you're just getting Pokemon into the discard pile and then uh, knocking stuff out, so maybe there's something there to at least like mess around on the ladder with and have some fun but yeah um like the video if you liked it dislike it if you didn't um comment subscribe getting close to a thousand which would be really cool and that's like basically when i hit a thousand i'm just gonna stop asking anyone to subscribe ever yeah so yeah take care and have a good one